Good day, folks. It's Greg Judy at Dream Pastors Farm. Coming to you this morning. We're on the Judy Farm. We just brought the cattle across the road here. As you can tell, it's a pretty bitterly cold morning. Um, I think they said wind chill this morning. It's like three below zero. The cows, you know, they're grazing. Um, but we're not, we're not having to feed any hay. We got a little bit of snow on here, but I wanted to show you the clover. Cattle are really going after the clover, and the clover's still green. So, I would say in another 10 to 12 days, we keep getting this below zero stuff. You're not going to see any uh, red, or I'm sorry, any green clover out here. So the cows are really going after it. Um, I was uh, reading the other day. Uh, it was actually on a Kathy Voss website, her on pasture shit. There's a great article on there about people worrying about you know if the feed was any good once they got frosted or if it and once the, the the lagoons got cold cold weather on how you know what's the feed value on it well the guy did some research on this clover and they said that actually when it gets a, a freezing mechanism on it, it actually starts breaking up the cells a little bit and the feed value actually goes up the sugars are higher in it after it gets a frost so it's super high quality feed. You watch this little calf right here. Well, it's not little, but that's actually a, a young bull. He's just getting that sugar. He's eating the sugar off the top of that snow. Okay? So everything in here is getting sugar this morning. Nice cold morning. It's a pretty good treat if you're a cow to be able to go out here and harvest this sugar. And there's fescue in here, so I'm not worried about the blow. Plenty of grasses in here with it. If this is just a solid stand of clover, eh, I, I might be a little apprehensive of it. But the, uh, the cattle are doing well. They've all got their winter hair coats on. We're grazing stockpile. And when we moved them across the road just a while ago, every cow was eating. Folks, when you put stress on animals with weather, just remember their energy requirements go up. They've got to have energy. And energy is the most limiting factor on our pastures. So you've got to get energy in them. Those cows are all huddled together, and Casey made the comment this morning, once it's gotten colder, the animals are more bunched together. Absolutely. They're using each other's bodies to stay warm. There's a lot of heat coming off one of those cows. You go up there and grab that cow and hug it, you're going to be pretty comfortable. She's, she's warm. You get a whole bunch of them together, that's, that's just a lot of good radiant heat that they can share with each other. But the animals, that's all they've ever done is graze, trust your grass. The lagoons are really good right now because they've gotten some frost freezing on them. And uh, the animals are just doing back foot. But back to cross the road, what we left this morning. We had them on there, we put them on there 4 o'clock last night, and moved them again about 8 o'clock this morning. And that pasture, I'd say they took out roughly about 50% of the grass. So we've still got another rotation, and we can hit that. So we're at November 14th, and two more days, deer season opens this coming Saturday. So this has got 60 days rest on it. So we'll be back here again in about 60 days. So pencil forward, that's about January 15th. So when we come back around on our second pass, because we've taken the candy out of here, the clover and some of the best fescue will give them a slightly bigger area but look what we got over here at the end of the pasture so we'll take the uh, Greg Judy bale on roller and after they've grazed their second pass then we come in right behind them that evening and we'll give them a couple bales or whatever they need to complement their grass if they don't get enough grass but don't ever take your hay and, and unroll it on stuff like this you're covering up some really good feed graze it let them get the best off of it manure it up tramp it whatever and then go in there and put your hay on top of that but you'd never go out on birds and stock call and then roll a bale of hay on that that's just covering up good feed doesn't make any sense i wanted to show you we've switched to our water this is our winter water system and uh, we've got enough cows drinking that we don't have to uh, worry about it freezing yet in the daytime yesterday was just brutal Today it's actually supposed to get up in the low 40, so we're not going to have any trouble. But you see the line going in the ground there. We've actually got a riser here. 
I don't know if Casey can zero in on that down in there, but there's actually a that's a quick that's a quick connect down there. They call them Plassen, Plassen quick couplers. And this is pressurized water. Okay, this is off a real water line. We've got this wire across here. That's hot. It's got eight thousand volts in it. I don't want a cow stepping on my hose. They step on that hose in this cold weather. I don't care how good a hose you got, they're gonna put a crack in it. If they don't break it at that point, they, they keep stomping on that hose all winter long. It's not gonna last. Of course, we've got our little rubber tarps up here. I don't know how much longer we're gonna need these because it's in the ground's froze pretty good now, but I've got them up here. And because we've only got, this is a 50 gallon tank and we've got the water level down here. So it's probably 40 gallons in here and there's about 300, no, it's 200 and 270 some head counting calves, yearlings, bulls, heifers, cows, everything. There's about 270 head drinking out of here. The Job Mega Flow. Hear it? I love those darn things. Uh, it's full flow when a cow drinks. And see here the cows can come in on this side and can come in on this side. But always, when you're using a small tank, put these in there. This is fiberglass rod, and they're only in the ground about a foot. What that's keeping you from doing is when that cow, you've got four cows come in and drink and get that thing about five gallons of water in there, you're going to find it flipped upside down. Or they'll break the hose off of it. Especially on snow. They can skid that thing around like a sled. So you've got to secure it. Okay. It doesn't take that long. These are only, in, like I said, they're in the ground about a foot. The ground's froze. Uh, you don't need to go any deeper than that. But that's pretty cool. So at night... Cows don't need to drink at night, not in the winter time. We just come in, we unhook the quick coupler, we dump the water. This whole tank is put in our, our garage at night where it's warm. The next morning we come out, we bring this with us, we plug it in, we're good to go. Can't get much simpler than that. Um, now, when it gets down below zero all day long, let's say 10, 15 below zero, we will put another hose in here and we'll pull a siphon and we'll let it run out on the ground in the next paddy. Don't let the water run out on the ground where the cattle are. You'll have a mess. But you pull a siphon on that, lay it on the ground, and it's pulling water out of that tank all day long. It's like a cow sitting there drinking on it. It can't freeze because there's water coming through that hose constantly all day long. Now, if it's not real cold, what I'll do is I'll take my siphon hose and on that end out there I'll take a twine and I step in and I'll, I'll start raising the hose up to where it looks like it's coming out about the, about the diameter of a pencil. If you just lay it on the ground that's going to be a lot of water coming out of there. If you're paying for it uh, you're going to run out in one day or eight hour track probably oh gosh probably three to four hundred gallons. But if you have it coming out the diameter of a pencil, you're talking about 30 to 40 gallons for the whole day. That's nothing. So just raise it up over there, tie it with a twine, and you can adjust it by how high you're raising it up in the air. Because what you're doing, once you get it even with your water level, you've killed the siphon. So don't do that. You've got to have water come out of there. That, that whole thing will just freeze up. So anyway, that's our winter water. The cows are drinking. They're looking good. they got a good winter hair coat on. They're slick. These cows are happy to be grazing. It's Greg Judy signing off. Thank you all.